William Morris Endeavor's board of directors convened an emergency meeting at night to cancel Meghan Markle's deal after the Hollywood Big Bash pre arthur event, the scenario of Meghan and Harry deciding to leave everything behind and leading a new life. This is the main content of today's newsletter. Well, I guess the folks over at WME just wanted to be safe in case somebody in the audience at an A-lister event they arranged tickets for Meghan Markle to attend just so happens to be completely deranged. And maybe they decide that the X mark embedded on Meghan's brow is supposed to be used by a marksman. So maybe they decide to take a little pop shot at her out of revenge for all her nasty attacks on America's latest and greatest British idol Catherine, the Princess of Wales. Especially since even Meghan's own Team Sussex has turned against her and exposed all her bribery and her corruption too. Since she told 30 lies, including accusations of racism, by the palace during that Oprah Winfrey interview, and then later on picking up a Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Award for walking away from their royal duties, supposedly because of the racism they experienced within the palace, but now they deny that they ever talked about racism in that interview. Hmm... From the very beginning, I have said that Meghan Markle's devious scheming to try to undermine Catherine would eventually have a negative impact on her physical well-being. And look, I'm not trying to say that Meghan Markle caused Catherine to develop cancer, but the stress that she brought into her life certainly didn't help matters. And now, apparently, many fans of Catherine all over the world are looking at Meghan Markle. And unless all the titles are removed and she disappears, goes into hiding, I guess, I don't think there's going to be a happy ending for her. Especially after the latest video that Catherine has released. I mean, it was a really sad thing to see. She looks like a mere shadow of the glowing and beautiful English rose we have come to love. I think it's breaking all our hearts. We don't want the king to welcome Meghan Markle back, that's for sure. And nobody wants to hear her name again. Nobody wants to see Meghan amongst Brits. And I simply don't want to see the kids ever at this point. I'm sick and tired of it. That time is long past. I think all people want to see right now is Catherine, William, and their family get through all this. I was also curious if Meghan had something to do with the records being breached or whatever attempted to be breached at the hospital. Catherine is gorgeous. She's a kind woman. She's so compassionate. And she's got a lot of support and love around her. And I do hope that they caught it early enough, and now she can finally start the healing process. Now that everybody knows a little bit more about what's happening, I hope that she can do it in peace. Chronic and prolonged stress, it does have physical effects. God bless Catherine, the Princess of Wales, and I do hope that she gets well soon. Meanwhile, we're all glaring at Meghan Markle and her henchmen in the media, that nasty William Morris endeavor, and those horrible sugars she influences and inspires with all that spite and resentment. So I guess she can add this to her long list of bullying incidents. She bullied little Charlotte, she bullied the Queen, she bullied the King during his diagnosis and treatment, and now she is being a vicious bully towards Catherine. Meghan Markle is not innocent. She and Harry are accountable for the suffering before, after, and during this diagnosis. Now, there was a rumor about three months ago that I guess turned out not to be true. And as we see, WME is still attached to the hip to Meghan Markle, a lot like Netflix. I suspect they must be all working together to keep people talking by always resurfacing these rumors that Harry and Meghan are coming back to the UK to live and they're getting dumped by Netflix and WME. But when is it going to happen? I mean, they just love to stir the pot with these declarations, but it never comes true. WME is doing anything they can to keep Meghan Markle in our heads. We don't want her in our heads, and they know that. So they say that Netflix needs her for the attention that she brings, and Meghan does it because they are so sick with hatred and jealousy. But the only thing I can really see are rumors that people are getting rid of her. I'm not going to believe anything more until I see it with my own eyes. The more we get to know Megan, the more loathsome she becomes. Both she and Harry are really a problem. And sooner rather than later, they need to have those titles taken away. I, for one, lay the blame mostly on Meghan Markle. Perhaps somebody should ask her about her contacts in Haiti. Oh, you know, the ones that practice voodoo. She's like that. And isn't it bizarre that both King Charles and Catherine were accused of being racist by Scooby Doo Doo, who of course was told by Meghan Markle what to say, and they have both been diagnosed with cancer. 
Now, some people who are more superstitious than me are going to say this is not a coincidence. I'm not there yet, but folks, I'm getting close. And if Charles really wants to protect Harry and reconnect with him at the cost of his other son and his daughter-in-law, who, by the way, have been loyal this whole time, then he needs to abdicate. He needs to let William be king, and he can just go to Montecito. He can move into one of their guest houses and do his own healing with Harry's family. I'm sure the Invisible Kids would be a big help. If Harry and Meghan decided to just leave everything behind and live an ordinary life, would they still be public figures? Would anybody still be interested in them? Well, no, of course not. I mean, they never left anything behind, let's be real, and they don't want to leave anything behind. They just want the money to keep on flowing into their bank accounts, even though it's stopped. All this stuff about Meghan is just ridiculous. They never left anything in spite of the narrative that we've been force-fed. They're already living what to them is an ordinary life, just being incredibly lazy, good for nothing, allergic to work, obviously. They don't do anything except just focus on what hard done by victims they are and how their lives are so difficult. They just rage against every single thing that crosses their paths. They are two very disturbed individuals. They're stuck in the past. And these made-up stories just keep on coming, and their idea apparently of moving forward is to keep on keeping on with being a couple of victims. The thing is, they're not victims, they just want to be. They need some excuse for their failures. Throwing tantrums and pitching little fits on the floor like a couple of babies did get them attention, and it got them some leverage to have their way when they were children, but not now. I mean, now they're grown-ups, but they still think that everybody's going to indulge them and give in to them. It's not going to happen. So according to Prince Harry, he got cheated out of a sausage, an extra sausage at breakfast, and he got pushed down into a dog bowl and broke it. His necklace got broken too. Well, it seems like he doesn't remember the bike rides that he indeed took with his father, of which there is photographic evidence. But he sure is going to remember a nasty little fight to spice up a book's narrative. And what was wrong with him claiming that he wanted to kill his own father by flying his jet fighter at his father's Audi, but he decided to back off? Oh, really? Thanks, Harry. Interestingly enough, nobody else remembers this story, not the flying instructor, not even King Charles. The crazy thing, too, is that Harry and Meghan believe that acting like a couple of entitled toddlers is going to work for them now. They want to be able to stomp their feet, clench their fists, punch pillows, and toss tea on anybody who's nearby. Uh, so they think that Charles is going to give in to their little fits, but he's not going to. Because I think even Charles can see all they really want from him is money. They're like a couple of teenagers, but much worse than teenagers, actually. It's really embarrassing to watch them. I mean, they're just revealing all of their worst characteristics, like a couple of teenagers, to be fair. But they're trying to convince us that they're so cool, they're with it. No, they're not. It's funny to me that they think they do a good job of covering up all their insecurities. And, well, they believe themselves to be flawless. Why? Why do they believe that? We can see all the flaws very clearly. They think that we're going to believe they're all hip and classy and trendy, wearing their expensive designer clothing and accessories and pretending to be the alternative royals of America. Meghan walks around in ball gowns that look like garbage bags. And then Harry wears high heels so that nobody knows he's shorter than his older brother. So why can't we see how cool they are? Well, because they're not. And Harry, what's going on with that stuff on top of your head? I can't even call it hair. The hair plugs you bought clearly are not working. Maybe you need to get a refund. Or perhaps the treatments have stopped because Meghan Markle's agenda has hijacked the procedures. But we're supposed to believe in the two of them. We're supposed to worship them. And we're supposed to pay them whatever they want. They truly are convinced of their own greatness, that greatness that nobody else can see. But we're supposed to see it. We're supposed to acknowledge it. This is the privacy that they wanted, remember? They want their privacy all over the media. Oh, and also, could we please go see their brand website again and make a donation, consent to cookies, read the tabloids, and buy tickets to their keynote speaker events? And that way they can just rake it all in and get high off of it. I'm so tired of fakery. Their PR machine is over the top. They just crank out all these BS stories. They don't bother to check if it's true or not. Anything just to get some clicks. 
But recently, I also heard that Meghan Markle has decided to sell Harry's underwear online. <laughs> well, that's going to keep the rumor mill going, won't it? As fake royals, naturally, Harry and Meghan want to appear at ribbon cuttings, at openings for bathrooms, maybe some openings for bargain appliance stores. They'll go on talk shows without any live audience, but it will be taped with that laugh track. They'll accept awards that they paid for. They'll go out there and play some polo, or Harry will at least. And Meghan Markle will be seen going through the drive through at the burger place. And they expect to have top-notch security for all this? Well, I mean, obviously they need it. Just look how important they are. And somebody else has got to pay for it, don't you forget. They expect us to buy into their special brand of nothingness. They're a couple of phonies. They believe themselves to be influencers, but who exactly are they influencing? Nobody. They advocate for mental health, but they also fuel the buzzing nest of hornets that are sitting on their necks. They've got a steady supply of drugs. They've got a steady supply of alcohol. And also some rescue chickens. Boy, do they ever like starting fights. They're like a couple of bullies on the playground, taunting and teasing and tyrannizing everybody else, getting their milk money. They love gaslighting. They love playing these manipulative games, grifting, bullying, lying. That is their brand. And is it a brand that anybody wants to buy anything from? No, but that's not stopping them. And their sense of entitlement is like nothing I have ever seen before. I mean, seriously, where do they get off? I mean, Harry, you're the spare. You were born the spare. You've never been as important as your older brother. And I know that eats you alive, but it's time to move on and accept it. And another thing is, you could have remained as a working member of the royal family, but you didn't want to. So it's your fault that you have become even more of a nobody than you were before. Because what do Harry and Meghan actually do? They don't have jobs. They don't have to go to the office. They don't have to commute anywhere. They don't have to spend any time with the unwashed masses. They don't have to step over the homeless guy passed out on the sidewalk, do they? No, they get to take private jets, and they're just ushered into places by the Avis front counter or the concession stand in the cinema. But are people going to feel sorry for them as they continue to try to get attention in any way they can? Well, no. Are people going to feel sorry when they eventually slip into obscurity? Again, no. Will people miss them? Will people be interested in them? Will people want to hear the story of how they were able to ruin their own lives and disappear from public view? Well, absolutely not. People will be so relieved they won't want to hear anything more about those two. Prince Harry was raised in the lap of luxury. He never had to learn the value or even the meaning of money. Harry was given an allowance for clothes and fun. He didn't have to work for that money. He was given a free place to live, free cars to drive, free staff, free security. Harry has never had to have a real job. And Meghan, well, she wasn't far behind. I mean, sure, she wasn't born into royalty, but she had her father to pay for everything. She had boyfriends pay for everything, and then her husband's. All of these men have paid her bills. Even when she was an actress on that cable TV show, her role consisted of about one minute per show. Meghan Markle never had to put in long hours to learn her lines. So they went back home and they left everything behind to live a peaceful life, which turns out to be impossible. Thank you for watching this whole video. That's all the content in today's newsletter. What do you think about the information? Please leave a comment to let us know. See you again in the next videos. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.